On this day of judgment, shortly after he arrived in court, Gian Gomeshi found his vindication, a full acquittal, based on the shattered credibility of the women who testified against him. Starting with the first witness, who alleged Gomeshi assaulted her in late 2002 and again in early 2003. The woman, whose identity is protected under a publication ban, told police Gomeshi yanked her hair back hard while they sat in his car, and that weeks later he pulled her by the hair and punched her repeatedly on the side of the head. The woman told police and the court she never saw him again and didn't want to. But under cross-examination, the defense pointed out inconsistencies in her accounts of both attacks and charged that she lied to the court. By revealing two emails the woman sent Gomeshi a year after the alleged attacks, Attached to one, a photo of herself in a bikini. The woman testified she had forgotten sending the emails and was trying to bait Gomeshi to confront him. But Judge William Horkins called her shifting statements incongruous and deceptive and ruled she deliberately breached her oath to tell the truth by withholding information. Composer, the woman says she's disappointed but has no regrets. I don't regret doing it. Um, it's been difficult. It's been hard. It's consumed me. It's, uh, but I needed to do it. The second witness, Lucy Decouter, waived the ban on her identity. She told the media and police Gomeshi choked and slapped her after they had dinner in Toronto in 2003, and that she only had passing contact with him after the alleged assault. But the defense revealed photos of the two cuddling in the park that same weekend, and several emails, including a sexually explicit note Decouter sent Gomeshi the day after the alleged attack, as well as a letter that ended with the phrase, I love your hands. Judge Horkins ruled Decouter chose to consciously suppress relevant and material information, and that indicates a failure to take the oath seriously and a willful carelessness with the truth. The third witness told police Gomeshi suddenly bit her and cut off her breathing while they sat kissing on a park bench in 2003, and that she went out with him again, but only in public. But days before she testified, she went back to police to say she had a sexual encounter with Gomeshi after the alleged assault. The judge ruled the woman was clearly playing chicken with the justice system. She was prepared to tell half the truth for as long as she thought she might get away with it, concluding that all the women's testimony was too tainted by deception to clearly determine the truth. We believe survivors! Outside, a growing number of protesters erupted, one jumping in front of Crown Prosecutor Michael Callahan. I just wanted to be clear that, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're considering the judgment. We're in the appeal period. So, yeah. The outrage was echoed in a rally hours later that Decouter attended. This, I feel like, was phase one of a conversation. And this is something that I feel like it's not going to end here. Sexual assault advocates also reacted. I think it's going to affect different survivors of sexual assault differently. I think it may make some women more determined than ever, and absolutely I agree with you. I think for some uh, women it will make it more difficult for them to go to the police. As for Gomeshi, he and his lawyer left without making a comment. His sister spoke on behalf of the family. We have watched him endure a punishment that was delivered not only prior to a verdict, but prior to any semblance of due process for all of Judge Horkins ended his judgment by saying the fact that the evidence raised reasonable doubt is not the same as deciding that the events never happened, but that the court can't be certain what is true and what is false. Peter?